Okay, in today's video, as you can see, I'm going to be going over voltage, charge, and current for charging and discharging capacitors in a simple RC circuit. In order to do that, I'm going to be using one of the excellent interactive simulations from PHET Interactive Simulations out of the University of Boulder, University of Colorado at Boulder. Here is their website. Whether you're teaching or whether you're learning, check out their website. They have excellent interactive simulations for both science and math. And this is the first simulation that we're going to be using in this video. And you can see in this simulation, we have, or in this circuit, we have a 10 volt battery and a 5 ohm resistor. And we are going to be running this circuit and turning the circuit on with this switch. And we want to see what happens to the current over time and the velocity, the velocity, the voltage over time, so that we can compare that to our circuit when we add a capacitor to the circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the simulation on. It's running here over time. I'm going to close this switch. And you will see when I close the switch that the current immediately goes to its maximum. 10 volt battery, 5 ohm resistor, ohm's law V equals I times R gives us a 2 amp current and the voltage immediately goes to its maximum of 10 volts because we have a single resistor here with our battery. Okay, there's no delay in the change from zero to the maximum current from zero to the maximum voltage. And then you can see if I run it again and I open the switch, then the current goes immediately without delay back to zero and the voltage goes back to zero. If I shut the switch, the values go to their maximum and if I open them, they go back to zero without delay. And we want to compare that to what we see in our circuit with the capacitor, which we're going to do right now. Okay, so this is the circuit we're going to be using for charging and discharging this capacitor. This is the branch that we'll be using to charge the capacitor, and this is the branch that we'll be using to discharge the capacitor. And once again, I'm going to run the simulation. I'm going to close this switch, and we want to see what happens to the current over time the voltage over time across the resistor and the voltage over time across the capacitor as we charge the capacitor. So I'm simply going to turn the simulation on. I'm going to close this switch and you will notice that the current and the voltage immediately go to their maximum values like we had in the previous simulation. But in this case, because we have a capacitor, you'll notice that the, let me just run this a little more that after they go to their maximum values, they immediately begin to decay exponentially back to zero. So the current goes back to zero and the voltage goes back to zero. The current goes to its maximum, two amps, and decays back to zero. The voltage goes to its maximum across the resistor of 10 volts and then decays back to zero. Why do they do that? Well, they do that because now we have a capacitor in the circuit and we're charging the circuit. And you can see this graph shows the voltage across the capacitor over time and you'll notice that it increases exponentially over time to its maximum value of 10 volts. When the capacitor is fully charged, then the voltage across the capacitor will be equal to the voltage of the battery. And you can see we have a 10 volt battery as I said, and then we have 10 volts across the capacitor and that tells us the capacitor is fully charged. When the capacitor is fully charged, then current no longer flows through the circuit and the voltage across the resistor from Ohm's law V equals I times R again is going to be zero volts. You'll notice also that the voltage across the capacitor does not increase immediately to its maximum value. It takes time for the charges to reach the capacitor. It takes time for the capacitor to become fully charged. And that you can see in this curve where there's this exponential increase over time of the voltage across the capacitor. Okay, so you'll notice all three of these graphs change exponentially over time. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open this switch and then we're going to close, turn the simulation on and then close this switch and once again we want to watch the change of the voltage across the capacitor over time as we discharge the capacitor and then the current through this branch of the circuit as we discharge the capacitor. So I'm going to turn this simulation on and now I'm going to close this switch and you'll notice as soon as I close the switch, the voltage across the capacitor begins to decrease 
and goes back to zero. And that also decays exponentially over time. There's not an instantaneous change in the voltage over time. It takes time, once again, for the capacitor to discharge. And you can see that right here where it takes time and then the voltage across the capacitor comes back to zero when the capacitor is fully charged. Now also as we discharge the capacitor, the current flows through this branch and you can see the current also reaches its maximum value instantaneously, but then also begins to decay exponentially back to zero. You can get a maximum current of two because this is a five ohm bulb, this bulb. I just set the resistance of this bulb at five ohms. Okay, and 10 volts, five ohms, two amps of current. All right, so you should notice for e, all four of these graphs, the current, the voltage, the voltage, and this current, that there's not an instantaneous change. There's a delay in the change of those values, and they either increase or decrease exponentially over time. Now, what I thought I would do is just do that whole cycle one more time, just a little more quickly to see the whole thing. So I'm going to run the simulation. I'm going to let those come back to zero, and then I'm going to charge the capacitor. You can see the capacitor is charging. The current begins to slow down. When the voltage across the capacitor equals the voltage of the battery, which is 10 volts, you can see which occurs right here. Then the capacitor is fully charged. I'm going to open this switch, and then I'm going to discharge the capacitor on the other side, and we get that curve for the voltage as it decreases and that curve for the capac for the current through the circuit as it increases and then immediately begins to decrease as the capacitor is discharged. And you can see, once again, we're back here at zero volts across the capacitor, and that tells us that the capacitor is now fully charged. Okay? Very good. I think that shows very nicely all four of those curves and the relationship between the current and the voltages as we charge and then discharge the capacitor through that circuit. Okay, now we're going to go back to our simulation. Thank you, PHET. I'm going to just kind of, kind of do a summary of what we saw in there. Now, this is a schematic of that circuit. We have the charging side and the discharging side. And for the charging side, we know we have Kirchhoff's law, voltage law, which tells us that the current across the resistor and the current across the, plus the current across the, I mean the current, the voltage across the resistor plus the voltage across the capacitor has to be equal to the voltage of the battery. We can rewrite that as the voltage of the battery is equal to the current I times R, because V equals I times R, plus we can rewrite the voltage across the capacitor as Q divided by C from our equation for capacitors, Q equals capacitance times the voltage. And um, you can see when we first close this switch, the current is at its maximum and the charge is zero. So that tells us that all of the voltage from this battery is going to be across this uh, resistor and the voltage across the capacitor will be zero because the charge across the capacitor, the charge on the capacitor is zero. But over time, as the circuit runs, then the current begins to decrease and go back to zero. So that tells us that then this value becomes zero. Well, where does all that voltage go? The voltage goes to the capacitor because over time, there's charge going to the capacitor, the capacitor is being charged, and that value increases. And then at the end, when the capacitor is fully charged, then the voltage across the capacitor is equal to the voltage across the battery, and the voltage across the resistor is zero. All right, so that's for charging. Now for discharging, all three of these values, the charge, the voltage, and the current, all begin at their maximum values. And then when I close this switch, then they all decay to zero. Zero coulombs, zero volts, and zero amps through the circuit. All right, so that's the summary kind of, of the charging and the discharging for all three of those, <coughs> excuse me, for all three of those values. Now, we have a graph that I showed you, and I just want to show you a summary of all three of those graphs. These are the graphs we had on the charging side. Remember, the current goes through the maximum and decreases back to zero. The voltage goes through its maximum and decreases back to zero and the voltage across the capacitor is zero, and then over time it increases exponentially until the capacitor is fully charged. And then we can see that here. When we start at time zero, this is when the switch is closed. Time, at time equals zero seconds, 
is not before we close the switch, but when we close the switch. And when we close the switch, the voltage across the capacitor is zero volts, but over time, it goes to its maximum value, which is the voltage across the battery when it equals the voltage across the battery. When we close the switch, the charge on the capacitor is zero coulombs, but when the capacitor is fully charged, then we can calculate the charge on the capacitor as Q equals C times V, the capacitance of the capacitor times the voltage of the battery. When we close the switch, the current immediately goes to its maximum. We can calculate the current as the voltage across the battery divided by the resistance of the resistor, but over time, the current goes to zero. And then when we close the switch, the voltage across the resistor is at its maximum, and that's the voltage across the battery. It's equal to the voltage across the battery, but over time, then the voltage across the resistor also goes to zero volts. All right. Now for discharging, we had these three graphs, the current, the charge across, the charge on the capacitor, and the voltage across the capacitor. And you'll notice that all three of those go to their maximum, or are at their maximum, and then that all three of those decay exponentially back to zero. So the current goes to its maximum, zero. The charge is at its maximum, goes back to zero when we discharge, and the voltage across the capacitor goes to zero as we discharge because there's no more charge on the capacitor. All right, so all three of those curves are identical. Okay, and then we can just summarize that one more time. What the heck? Uh, the charge, the voltage, and the current, they're all at their maximums, and then they all go back to zero over time. Okay, so there you go. I think uh, we did a lot in that video, but I wanted to try and make a video where we covered uh, charging and discharging of a capacitor and talk about the charge, the voltage, and the current in the charging branch and the discharging branch. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Please subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video and leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.